Welcome back to this video lecture series on object oriented programming in Java. So today we'll be learning about the loops in Java. So let's start. So before knowing the type of loops we have in Java, in a simple manner, let us understand what a loop is. So if there is some certain task that we want to do repeatedly, and we really don't want to repeat the same task, that is, we really don't want to write the same line of code for numerous times, we go for loops. So to optimize a task which is repeated for numerous times, we use loops. In Java, we have mainly three kind of loops. The first one is a while loop, second one is a do while loop, and the third one is a for loop. So for case of the while loop, what happens is that, or rather for all of the loop cases, there are three things that we need to take care of. One is a condition on the constraint, then the statement that we have to execute, and the termination. So in while loop, we first check for a condition or a constraint. If the condition evaluates to true, then we go to execute a statement or a block of statement. And then again, we evaluate the constraint or condition. If it still evaluates to be true, we keep on executing the statements within the loop. Next comes is the do while loop. In do while loop, what we do is, we first execute a statement or a block of statements, then check for a condition, which if evaluates to be true, then we again go on and execute the statements or the block of statements. For both the cases, we terminate when the condition or the constraint for the loop evaluates to be false. Lastly, for for loop, what we have, we have a initializer. We initialize from that point, then we check for a condition. If that satisfies as true, then we go on and execute the statement or the block of statements we have inside the loop. Then we increase or decrease or rather change the initializer. And that is again compared with the condition we have. If it evaluates to be true, we again go on executing the statements. Otherwise, we go out from the loop. So one thing we must know when we are talking about loops is the difference between the while and do while loop. The while loop, what happens for that is a first a condition is checked and then a statement is executed. That is why this is called an entry control loop. So it means that if you want to enter the loop, you first have to check the condition. Only then you will be allowed to enter the loop. That is why it is called entry control loop. Whereas if we see the case of do while loop, irrespective of whatever the condition is written for the loop or the constraint for the loop is, this do while loop first executes a statement and then checks for the condition. That is why it is called exit control loop. So the difference is that for do while loop, one statement will definitely be executed. But for while loop, if the condition evaluates to be true, only then the statements will be executed. So let's now jump onto the coding part and see how we can implement these loops. So I have opened my ID and I have already created a project here. So here in this SRS folder, we'll first start with creating a new Java class. So let's name it as demo loop. So first things first, we'll create the main method here. Static void main in here the argument will be string args so from here the execution of the program will start so first we'll explain a while loop so suppose we want to print a series of numbers starting from 1 to 9 what we will do we'll take a variable and initialize it with some value let's say 1 then in the while loop the syntax is we first write a while then give a pair of parentheses now inside these parentheses, we give a condition that is i is less than 10 because we want to print from 1 to 9. And here we we'll simply print so system.out.println printing i and we'll give this condition so that the loop iterates properly. If we do not give this i++, what will happen is that this loop will become an infinite loop because every time it is getting a value of 1 for the variable i and it is always less than 10. So it will keep on printing the same line over and over and that is something we really don't want. Next comes is a do while loop. For that, let's say we take a value of j to be 12. Now, suppose the condition of the loop is that a series of number is to be printed which are less than 10 but we still want to print the value 12, which is greater than 12. For that, 
to execute at least this statement we use this do while loop so in this while here we can put the constraint as j less than 11 and if we do this that print j only and lastly if we decrement it then we can see that 12 will be printed although the condition does not satisfy with it lastly for for loop we take an initializer let's say k and starts from 1 let's say we want to print from 1 to 6 so k less than 10 let's say not 6 and we increment the counter or initializer and here suppose we want to print all the even numbers ranging from 1 to 9 so if k percentage 2 then has to be 0 then we we say that the even number is and it is k right so so let's first run all these different loops so here is the output here now if we go on at the top so first in the while loop part we can see that 1 to 9 is printed now in the do while loop part we first uh, took a value 12 for j now as the do while loop first executes a statement and then checks for the condition so it first printed out this 12 then it checks for the condition that whether j is less than 11 or not now as we set the uh, execution of statement that we first print the value of j and then we decrement it by 1 so after printing 12 the value of the j becomes 11 which is not less than 11 so only 12 is printed here and lastly for the for loop we wanted to print all the event numbers ranging from 1 to 9 as you can see 2468 is being printed so that's the basic kind of loops three kind of loops now we will take a practical world example and we will see how we can implement it so for that i'll again make a new class here and i'll name it loop example so loop x <coughs> so here again i'll be starting up with the public static void name string ages so the example we want to take in is that suppose it's a ticket counting system so the one who sells the ticket he knows certain things that he has suppose a fixed number of tickets to sell let's say 15 and he knows that whenever he sells a ticket the number on the ticket gets incremented by one and he also knows one thing that the starting number of ticket starts from a certain number let's say five so if he knows all these things what we need to do here is we need to give his output the starting number of the ticket and then all the following number number of tickets within his constraint so if the starting number of the ticket is five and if he has to sell 15 tickets only so it will start from five and then will go on selling till number 20 ticket if he has a ticket number 21 he cannot sell it because it's exceeding the constraint of 15 tickets so for that what we'll do we'll first take some variables so let's name it initialize ticket rather this and this value is 5 we'll take another total ticket is equal to 15 now why we need a loop here because the work is same you have a ticket you see the number you see the number of tickets you can sell and sell it then do the same thing for 15 times so for that we'll use a for loop here so for here the initializer will be will take a variable int i and it will have a value of this initializer ticket now what will be the constraint this will be running for a time of 5 plus 15 so the last ticket number would be 20 okay so one thing the last ticket number will be 19 because 5 is also counted so what we can see that i will be less than i and i ticket plus total ticket and here lastly we will increment the value the i so here in the for loop we'll print down some things that current 
ticket number to be sold is this i now to check that whether we did all the things we can s out that after all the selling the ticket number we have is the value of i it's for checking whether the loop did the proper work or not so let's run it so here is the output we get so we knew that the starting or the initialized ticket number is 5 so the seller starts selling the ticket from ticket number 5 and he keeps on and he keeps on incrementing the number that is he keeps on selling tickets one by one until the total number of sold tickets is 15 so from 5 to 19 we can see the total number of tickets sold is 15 and the selling has stopped here so we can see after selling all the nine, uh, 15 tickets the ticket number at the top of the stack is 20 so this is how this simple task that is selling the ticket and keeping a track of it can be done by a loop rather than using the same statement of the same line of code for numerous times thank you for watching this video and staying with us see you next time